Hello YouTube, back with the next Battle Boss review, and you know, as you can see, I've got the Effects Robotics Endgame kit. This is obviously very well designed, I mean, it took about three hours to do, and one thing I will note is that the instructions are a little subtle when it comes to, like, certain things like the weapon mount and the drive, because attaching that, you're making two different, ver different, uh, you know, they're almost identical, except one's for one side and one's for the other. That was one thing that tripped me up when I was, you know, designing this kit, or putting this kit together because it was, I couldn't, I did not notice that there was a slight variation. I was kind of confused actually regarding, um, you know, how they wanted it actually assembled and how it was meant to be assembled. But I got it figured out. You know, I think that's why it partially took me over three hours to complete. But as you can see, it's based on the season one design, or this, the first version of Endgame that we got to see. You got the big disc up front, which is. Actually, there's two belts. Let's see if I can show them well enough to you. Probably not. But yeah, that's probably about as best as I'm going to be able to do. I've got a black shirt. Oh, yeah, that, that gives it a little bit better. There's two belts, one on each side of the, you know, the weapon. And if you look at the front, you should be able to see the pulleys for them. I don't know if they're going to show up that well. Maybe... Eh, it gives you a little bit of a clue, but... And here's the mechanism. This is how it all kind of comes together. There's gears here for these two wheels. And these two wheels are not, you know, the, the, the front two wheels are not powered by anything. I'll put that up front so you can see that little... Yeah. These wheels are, pow are powered by a gear. There's two gears in the middle here. And then, of course, up front, there's two standalone wheels. They don't really move as freely by the same token, but... You can see when I move one of the wheels, you can see the the gears inside turn, and you may notice the yeah. If I spin it fast enough, you'll notice that that's the way. That's kind of a little a small demonstration on how the weapon actually how that all comes together. And unfortunately, though, the wedge is not low enough to actually get underneath anything. I feel in a sense it's a little wobbly in terms of how it's uh, connecting. There's not really a whole lot connecting it together. It's mostly just uh, two support pieces. I don't know. It's not much, but it's enough to keep it in place. It was probably one of the easiest parts of the uh, kit to assemble. Well, actually, yeah, one of the hardest, harder parts was this part. I mean, that's partly much. Yeah, it's definitely a... Uh, I was definitely to blame for that, but... Not entirely, because it wasn't entirely clear, I guess, and how that... I had to actually use one of the pieces from the kit to hold it in place, so I actually got the uh, little white bits on the side here. Let's see if I can... Yeah, those little connector pieces in there. I don't think I can show it that well. Yeah, those little connector pieces actually were a uh, tri little trickier to get inside there. I had to hold this and at the same time put this in there. And yes, those are stickers. There's a sticker here and a sticker here. And of course, the uh, labels themselves. I may have done so well putting together, you may not even notice. But yes, those are indeed stickers. They're a little reflective in the light over here. What I found interesting is that there's no counterweight. Unlike the Minotaur kit, which actually had a little uh, a piece that was meant to be a counterweight. There's no counterweight in here, and yet it spins just fine. I'm not really sure how that all comes together, but... This is a very well-designed kit. I mean, I definitely recommend it. If you're a fan of Endgame, you're a fan of, you know, even New Zealand, or, you know, you know Jack Barker personally, or, you know, you know I want to support him, whatever. But, yeah, this is a fantastic kit. I mean, all the details here. Obviously, I think the only downside, as I said, is the wedge is just not low enough to get underneath anything. You'll have to modify it in some way. Luckily, there's little bits in uh, underneath here, which I find interesting. It's also nothing to connect it, nothing... Uh, You'd have to, I think there were a couple extra spare parts. I'm probably, uh, you know, you can probably get away with, you know, some sort of plastic extension or even some of the extra, extra robotics pieces. You can put those in there and use that. But it's a pretty awesome kit. I'm going to see if I can show you how this all comes together. Where you can see, a, you'll see this disc spin a little more freely and stuff like that. So if you give me a sec, I'll get things set up and uh, we'll uh, get this uh, demonstrated. Let's see if I can get this over for just a sec while I... Um, 
because this is the box I want to use. And then, oops, uh, what do I want to do here? Yeah, like this. Like I did before. Yeah. Yeah, that'll give you a good idea. So there's the box. Here's the kit. I'll put it as far enough away so you can see it. Okay, hopefully that shows up okay. When the kit's moved, it may not show up quite so well. It's, this box isn't exactly flat, but... I think because it's partly it's new, but you can see the disc goes in the same direction regardless of which way you do it. And then, of course, that's down to, there's a couple little gears in here. You can't see them that well, but at the bottom, you can see there's, there's multiple gears, sets of gears in there. There's uh, a couple at the bottom that tip, that uh, tip back and forth as you're moving it. And that actually is what I think allows it to do that. Yes, I mean, this is pretty cool. I kind of wish the front wheels were maybe a little more fluid so you can move them back and forth a little more easily. I think in some ways that may be part of why it's, you know, as tough as it is to get going. But unlike the other ones, like the Tombstone kit and the uh, Minotaur kit, which are chain-driven, this is actually powered by belts. So... I don't know, I feel like maybe that's also part of it. I kind of, maybe the, maybe if it were chain, because the one thing I can do with the tombstone and the minotaur kit is I can like really rev it forward and actually get it to, you can't do that with this kit. It doesn't uh, continue spinning afterwards. I think the chain, I think it may be a little bit of uh, the various, you know, design for the kit as well as the chain. To some of the uh, the pulleys are a little more snug. They're like just enough that you can actually like stretch it over the. Uh... Yeah, and here's this will give you kind of a better idea. It wouldn't be able to do that if there was this was actually flush on the ground. So I don't think it would need much. You know, but luckily there is enough space. I guess I don't know whether that was any intentional to allow you to add something to it, but. You're not likely, I mean, I guess it also doesn't matter in this case for the kit because, you know, the other kits that are available, Endgame probably wouldn't have too much of a difficulty getting underneath anyway, except for, well, well, Bite Force might be a little 50-50 uh, on it, I suppose. But, yeah, I mean, this is a brilliant kit. I mean, if, and there's even a space that if you wanted to, you could put a self-writing mechanism see if I can show it. Let's see. Yeah, there's a hole here that would fit perfectly. You can put sunglasses and help itself right and get back into the match. But yeah, it's a brilliant design. I've, I've always been a fan of these kits, and obviously I'm a fan of Endgame. I'm kind of, I guess you could say I'm definitely uh, biased towards uh, destructive robots, but I don't think there's anyone who really isn't. You know, who doesn't love, I mean, who doesn't love a, uh, you know, destructive robot? I mean, that's kind of what makes the sport so exciting, is uh, getting robots like that. But, of course, I appreciate a lot of robots. I'm not restrained to uh, spinners, and I don't show any hatred towards uh, flippers. or back there. I mean, I even like fast wedges. I know most people are going to probably gasp and, you know, wonder if I'm crazy or something. But, no, they actually work. Fast wedges can be just as exciting as a spinner, because they can... You know, get a huge amount of speed and throw your opponent on the wall, and you basically, it's almost like being a flipper in a sense, because they can get launched high into the air. So that's my review on the Endgame Vextra Bikes kit. Thanks for watching.